these are the key ideas that you need to know for the population dynamics units. Population is essentially the number of people that live in a particular place. This can be on a variety of scales from the local up to the national and to the global as well. Now, global population has risen throughout history with a big leap after about 1900. Uh, this is due to a number of factors, but significantly we're thinking about improvements in technology and science and medicine. So there is a massive improvement in people's health and their health care. Population numbers, they change because of three factors, birth rate, death rate and migration. Three things to remember there. Now, if you want to calculate a country's population change, there is a formula you need to remember, and that is birth rate minus death rate, which equals your natural increase or your growth rate. If the answer to that sum is a negative number, then the population is declining. If it is a positive number, it's growing. If it's on or near zero, it's what we call a balanced population, and it's staying much the same. There's no change going on. When we're looking at a population of a particular country, we sometimes talk about a population structure. That is the makeup of the population. It's split into male and female, and arranged by age group, and is shown on a population pyramid. You, you should know how to read these, and if you don't know, it's worth finding out before you do the exam. Now, most LEDC countries will have a high birth rate and therefore a rapid population growth. Uh, again, for a number of factors. Generally, families are large because people expect a high infant mortality rate. That means they expect many children to die at a young age. And so families tend to have more children so that there is a chance of these children surviving. Culturally as well, it could be important, or traditionally, it could be important to have a large family. And there's economic benefits in LEDC countries to having a large family. Uh, the majority of people work in primary industry and there are less rules and laws to do with child labour. So if you have a large number of children, many of those children can help on the farm or can be sent out to work to earn money for the family. MEDCs are a little different. MEDCs will tend to have a low birth rate and also low death rates and so will have very slight growth, so a low growth rate or even a decline. This is due to obviously better health care, uh, better facilities uh, and also crucially better education, uh, particularly for women. If women are educated, they're more likely to want to go on to university, more likely to want a career, and therefore delay having children until later in life, and therefore will probably have less. Also, caring for children in an MEDC country is far more expensive, and so people tend to have less children. You can see the transition of countries and the link between the amount of population growth and a country's economic status by looking at the demographic transition model. And again, this is another type of graph that you should know how to read and you should understand before you go into the exam. There are a number of problems that are related to population. Populations can be described as aging, i.e. there's too many old people. They could be described as youthful, too many young people. MEDCs are more likely to have an ageing population. LEDCs are, are more likely to have a youthful population. Both come with benefits, both come with problems. The other two kinds of problems that you can have are an underpopulation, meaning that there aren't enough people to exploit the resources you have or to push the country forward economically. So to make enough money to help the country continue growing and making money. 
The other opposite to that is overpopulation. Too many people for the amount of resources. And this is where one of our case studies comes in. We think about China and the one-child policy. One-child policy came in in 1978, but this came in after a long period of extended famine where people didn't have enough to eat and the population was rapidly growing. The Chinese government reacted in a number of ways. Firstly, by making marriage later. People couldn't marry till much later on. Um, through a lot of education about contraception, but the most famous example is the one child policy, which meant that families could only have one child. The last part of the population dynamics unit is migration. Please see my migration revision video for the key pointers on that.